my name is April and welcome to my sewing channel. So last week I learned how to sew a front fly zipper and this week I'm gonna put my new skills to the test and make myself a pair of wide leg denim pants. This is part of my making everyday clothes from scratch series and wide leg pants are one of the most worn items in my wardrobe. So it's finally time I make my own to wear. Today's video is sponsored by Native, which is awesome because every day when I sew and film a new video, I sweat a lot because of all my studio lights shining on me and especially when I'm ironing. So to keep my armpits smelling fresh all day, I use Native's natural deodorant. What I love about Native is that they have so many amazing scents to choose from. I get the box of three so I can switch up the scents I use every day. Right now the scents I have are citrus and herbal musk, cucumber and mint, and eucalyptus and mint. A little goes a long way and I love that the texture is not sticky when applying it and it dries quickly so it doesn't get on your clothes. It's also vegan and cruelty free and the ingredients are aluminum free, sulfate free, and paraben free. Normally three deodorants from Native would cost $36 but if you click my link down in my description box and use my code COOLERPA you can get three for only $24. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. I created my pants pattern by tracing a pair I owned at home. Luckily, I have many wide leg pants to use, but if you don't have any, you can trace any pair of pants and just make adjustments to them. So if you only have fitted jeans, you can draw the legs to be wider and more flared out towards the bottom. Make sure to watch my previous video to see how I added the zipper fly to my pattern. Once I finished my pattern, I made a sample to test the fit and now I can cut out my denim fabric. The denim I chose was medium to heavy weight, but any weight material would look great as wide leg pants. I actually want to make another pair in a lighter weight fabric. Cut two front pants and two back pants out of your fabric and transfer any dart markings and also mark out the crotch seam in the front to avoid any confusions when sewing the fly. I really like the pockets on these pants and want to recreate them for my new pants. So I trace them by laying a piece of paper on top and roughly marking out the shape. Afterwards, true up the lines with a ruler and add seam allowance. Before assembling the pants, sew the darts closed in the front and back. Next, I decided to sew the front and back pants together at the side seams first. That way I can see what the pockets will look like on and sew them while the pants are laying flat. I temporarily pinned the inner leg seam closed and tried on the pants to test the fit and everything looks great so far. Now we can add the pockets on and pin them in place. Unpin the inner leg seam and lay the pants flat so you can sew the front and back pocket pieces on. I sewed two rows of stitching to secure the pockets in place, first sewing along the very edge of the pocket. And then the next row I sewed about a quarter inch from the edge. I'm just using regular thread for the top stitching, but if you do want your top stitching to pop more, you can use thicker embroidery thread. Once the pockets are on, sew the inner leg seams closed. Now it's time for the zipper. I recycled the zipper from a thrifted pair of pants and mark the bottom of the zipper onto the fly on both sides. Next, pin the crotch seam right side together and sew a permanent stitch from the back side of the crotch seam up to the zipper marking, back stitch, and then switch your settings to a basting stitch to sew the front of the pants closed. Thank you. 
After the crotch seam is sewn, press the fly open and sew in the zipper. This method of sewing a front fly zipper was really easy to learn for me. I won't go into detail about it here because I explained it all in my last video, so check that out if you want to learn as well. Alright, now that the zipper is sewn in and it's time to top stitch the fly down, I realized that my front pockets were sewn too close to the middle and it's going to get in the way of the fly stitching. So I had to remove the pockets and move them more to the side. Next time, I would mark the fly on the front of the pants for reference when placing my pockets so I don't have to go through this again. Now that the pockets have been moved, I can top stitch the fly down. And there you have it, a completed front fly zipper. All that's really left to do is to add the waistband. To create the waistband, I decided I wanted mine to be one and a half inch wide. So I tore a strip of fabric that was four inches wide. So when folded in half, it will be the size I want. I'm designing my waistband to have matching seams with the pants, so I measured and marked up to the side seams, added seam allowance, and cut two different pieces for the front waistband, and one long strip to cover the entire back. Face the waistband pieces right sides together and sew the side seams. Then fold the waistband in half right sides together and sew the ends closed. Flip the waistband right sides out and pin the front waistband right sides together with the pants. We are only going to sew the front waistband around the entire pants first. Next, fold under the raw edges of the waistband on the other side and top stitch the front waistband down up to the side seam only, leaving the back side open. All the pants I love have elastic in the back probably so it can fit different body shapes better. So I'll be doing the same elastic back to my pants as well. Tuck one end of the elastic into the waistband at the side seam and secure it in place. Tuck the other end of the elastic into the other side seam and secure it in place as well. You should measure and mark the elastic to stretch and fit the back of your waist. After marking mine, I actually had to trim it even shorter to really scrunch up the waist to hug me. So it's all trial and error. To sew the back waistband, first you want to top stitch the elastic down at the side seams to hold it in place. Then you can stretch and sew the waistband closed. And this is what it ends up looking like. Next, trim the pants and hem it to your desired length. The pants won't be complete without some belt loops and I made mine about 3 quarters of an inch wide. Cut them into 3 inch pieces. I'll be adding 2 loops to the front, 2 at the sides and 1 at the center back. To sew the loops on, I first sewed the top side right sides together to the waistband and flipped it over. Then fold under the raw edge of the loop and top stitch it in place. Thank you. 
And lastly, I sewed on the button and buttonhole, which ended up taking longer than I thought. Turns out I should have sewn the buttonhole before I attached the waistband to the pants because my buttonhole foot would not sew over all the bulkiness of the jean. After many attempts, I just undid the waistband and one of the belt loops so the waistband can lay flat, and then I was able to sew the buttonhole. And I'm finished. Here is what the finished pants look like. Watching. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and learn something new. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see next and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!